Welcome back. This is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com. Uh, this is the third part of this video series where I'm restoring this ARP Omni. Uh, in this part, we're going to uh, redo the power supply. Uh, so the first thing that I'm going to do is actually take the power supply out of the upper portion of the case. So in taking the power supply out, I noticed a couple of things. For starters, this uh, yellow label there on the back of the case that shows where these uh, wires from the power cord and switch are to be plugged in, uh, this is usually on the, the power supply board itself. So someone had removed that sticker and put it on the back of the case, which uh, reversed the order uh, that they should go. So someone had plugged, uh, uh, wired this up wrong. The other thing I noticed, uh, it's hard to see here, I'll, I'll take a picture of it so you can see it better. The, the leads on those, that uh, op amp, are all blackened. And, and most notably over here, there's two resistors that are just completely incinerated. So uh, this power supply definitely, definitely needs some help. So now I've got the power supply board out. The next thing I'm going to do is actually pull this power cord. Uh, someone had sliced this, uh, sliced this uh, power cord to remove the ground pin. And uh, we definitely want this to be a three-pronged plug, um, you know, so, it's so the instrument's properly grounded. And what's holding this in is a uh, strain relief bushing here. And uh, the strain relief bushing uh, prevents this uh, cord from being yanked out when you pull on it. Uh, it also prevents the cord from rubbing against the sheet metal and uh, potentially causing an electrocution hazard. So uh, we are going to remove that power cord and replace it. Remove the power cord, we're going to use this bushing uh, removal tool and we'll compress the bushing and pull it straight out and then it will uh, unfold off the power cord and then we can pull the power cord through. So I was taking a look at the wiring here. Uh, there's these quick connect terminals that connect these wires to the power supply and uh, one of them was just kind of held on by electrical tape. Uh, the other one here looks like it's been cut and then the new water wire was so soldered on there. This, this looks really sketchy so I'm going to rip this out and we're going to put new quick connect terminals there. So I replaced the electrical tape uh, uh, connection here with a, uh, with a crimped uh, quick connect terminal. And I have a new power cord with a properly crimped uh, quick connect terminal. Since these are the ones that uh, have a piggyback on them, I use the ones with the piggyback on them. This is not the place to cut corners and take shortcuts and be cheap. You know, you, you need to do this correctly because this is the line voltage and uh, not only can you damage your instrument if you cut corners here, but you can you can uh, you know seriously hurt somebody. So uh, to technicians who put little wads of electrical tape on the mains wiring, maybe take some notes here. We can use the same strain relief bushing that we took off. Uh, we just kind of have it hug the cord where we want the cord to be frozen and uh, I'll start kind of pushing it in there but I'm going to need to grab the bushing tool and, uh, and compress it and since this is a new cable it could be a little tighter than the old one I'm going to make sure that there we go work that in snug but that's the point of this there we go so that is in now uh, hopefully my hand wasn't blocking it but I need to use some force to get that in so this isn't going anywhere now and then I'm going to connect the wiring here I'm going to screw the, the ground wiring to the case uh, and the black coming from the switch goes to the black coming from the, the cord so I just piggyback that on there like this. And then the uh, red from the switch goes to the white from the, uh, the cord. Piggyback that on. 
and uh, the only thing left for me to do is just screw this down and then these will plug back onto the power supply board once we finish it and put it back in the keyboard. The other thing I'm going to do right now is uh, clean the old thermal compound off. So now it's time to turn our attention to the power supply board itself. Uh, first step is going to be to remove the old components. We're going to take off the three uh, electrolytic capacitors and the three tantalum capacitors sorry, right here. Uh, in this case, because we know that there's some problem here on the power supply, uh, uh, we're also going to change the two ICs. Um, this one kind of has some blackened leads, which is not a good sign. And then we have to replace these two uh, totally charred uh, resistors there. And going to desolder those two ICs from the power supply board, look at the terrible nasty soldering job that someone did. The solder joints are all dull and uh, there's like lump, lumpy uh, looks like on the uh, smaller op amp the, the upper left pin here uh, the, uh, the pad got removed from the board they left all the flux residue. It looks really gross. So we're going to take that all off and clean up well, what's left of the traces underneath this mess and uh, replace the ICs with some sockets and uh, put some new ICs in there too. I've got all those components off and you can see there's like liquefied resistor goo there where those uh, resistors got incinerated. The, the two ICs are off, the capacitors are off. I'm going to clean that up even on the surface of the board but also this flux residue on, on the back side of the board and uh, then it'll be ready to accept the new components. Because of the sad state that this power supply was in, it's going to get a little more attention than, than they normally do. One other thing that I noticed here was this uh, heat sink is, uh, is loose. So the transistors are, are kind of wiggling around and, and since the uh, power supply did suffer some damage what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this heat sink by taking this screw out and then these three tr sorry these two transistors will come out of their sockets and then I can test them out of circuit. You can't test a transistor in circuit um, with a multimeter so I'm going to remove them from circuit and test them to make sure that they're okay. Here are the uh, old parts on the left that I've taken out. So three electrolytic capacitors, three tantalum capacitors, two ICs, and four halves of resistors. And then on the right side, this is what I'm putting back in. Uh, the tantalum capacitors are getting replaced with electrolytics. The ICs are getting socketed, and those uh, resistors, half resistors, are getting replaced with two whole resistors. One other thing I visually inspected and noticed was uh, blown is this fuse, the slow blow fuse here, and uh, I have a new one here that I'm going to replace it with while I'm doing this work to the power supply. So before I put this back in, uh, I set it in here and I connected the, uh, the wiring, and I'm just going to do a quick sanity check on this to make sure that uh, the power supply doesn't blow up and that the rails are, are relatively correct. Uh, they're not going to be perfect uh, because uh, there's no load attached to the power supply so I'm going to turn the power on and uh, so far so good so let's uh, test the, uh, the rails so the uh, red wire is the plus 15 rail and here I'm getting a 14.13 and the purple is the minus 15 and I'm getting minus 1407. So I'm going to try to dial these in with the uh, with the trimmers here uh, a little bit more, see if I can get it a little closer to 15 and uh, if so then I'll go ahead and, and bolt this back into the into the case. So I was able to get the, uh, the rails um, right at 15 and minus 15 volts just by adjusting the trimmers here. This one in the back is the uh, plus 15 volt trimmer, so do this one first that'll get the minus 15 a little closer and then with the minus 15 trimmer you can complete the job. So right now the rails are at plus and minus 15 volts. I'm going to need to recalibrate it once I connect it to the rest of the synthesizer. Um, but this will do it for the power supply. I'm going to put the screws back in and then I can set the top part of the case aside and we can go work on the rest of the synthesizer. 
So this power supply was a little more messed up than they, they usually are in addition to having the original capacitors. We had some burnt resistors, some burnt ICs, uh, the loose heat sink here, the blown fuse, the sketchy wiring. Uh, so all that stuff's been corrected and uh, in the next part of this video series we're going to move on to doing the, uh, the synthesizer board, which is the board uh, with uh, the nine synthesizer sliders and then the uh, the two boards up here with the synthesizer and uh, string controls the, the buttons and sliders for that so stay tuned uh, for the next part of the video series and this is Synth Chaser from SynthChaser.com saying thanks for watching bye